Hi everybody, this is Three of Skeins Knit and Crochet Podcast number 97. And I'm Lisa. Hello. I'm Chris. Hey. Oh, while I'm thinking about it, hey, like and subscribe, right? It really makes mom happy. And I got it out of the way right off the top. Go me. What do you want to talk about today, Chris? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Did I throw you off? A little bit. Sorry about that. It just it came to me, so I was like, "Ooh, let me do it." <laughs> okay. So <laughs> you got some whips. I well, I have a whip. You have two whips. All right. See, we're, we are in disagreement about the stage of my projects. I, in my okay, mind, you have a whip and a pit. I have a whip and a pit. That's okay. right. That that's where I'll go. A pit, if you don't know, is a project in planning. She has a whip and a pit. So here is my whip. It is my skirt. So I'm in the last two inches of this thing. And I cannot wait to get it off my needles. There we go. I may even turn it up right side up for you guys this week so you can get a sense of the skirtiness of it all. Skirtiness? The skirtiness. You know, I noticed last week this was a little off center. So here I am centered at everything. So what I'm working on this week is finishing the flounce at the end. This is the fit, fit and flare trumpet skirt from Knitting Lingerie Style. So the top part of the skirt is basically a straight skirt. And the last uh, bit of the skirt flares out. So straight flare at the end. And that's what I'm working on now. And as you can see, I'm multiplying my stitches. I'm, you know, adding stitches every other round. So what I've noticed is, although I've been very comfortable on this length of needle, I want to say this is a 32 inch needle. I don't remember anymore. It's been a minute. And it's been, it was very comfortable. Is there nothing on your needle that tells you how long your cord is? No. Because this is an interchangeable, so uh -huh. you can change it around. I forget all the time. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> I believe this is a 32 inch needle. Uh, now I'm getting a little crowded on the needles because I have a lot of stitches on these needles. So I'm going to go for about another inch worth of increasing in the stockinette pattern and the last inch is going to be garter stitch that will kind of mirror what's going on in the waistband. The waistband is a fold over waistband. So I'll be folding this over and installing elastic in here. And then the skirt will really be done after I've installed the elastic. But otherwise it's going great. It's just, I have like excitement to start something new because I'm on the verge of the end of my last project. So the verge of the end? I'm on the verge of the end. Yes. Literally the last two inches. So, you know, all I'm thinking about is new projects, right? That is quite literally all I'm, all I can like think about. But I finished my socks last week, so I technically have room for another project. So you're sticking to two projects at a time? Yeah, right now, sure. <laughs> yeah, two seems reasonable. Okay. Two seems reasonable. And I like having a project that I have to concentrate on a lot less. Mm -hmm. And even if one is more, a little bit more complicated or something that's a little bit more pay attention knitting. Because sometimes I just want to sit in front of the TV and go, and that's all I really want. Is that what it looks like when you need? <laughs> you know, sometimes you get into that groove. <laughs> oh, goodness. But other than that, I, I can't wait. And we're, we've been having quite the fall. It's still warm. So I will, I'm will. i going to get some wear out of this cotton skirt before it turns too cold. So this is Lino Hand Eye from Trendsetter. The... Uh, Colorway is called Ocean Waves, and it's, I believe it's a 100% cotton? I don't know. What no. Linen it, it was a cotton linen blend. Yeah. My bad. 
There's a cotton linen blend, and I love her. I absolutely love her. But that's what's going on with lace skirt. How's it going over by you, Chris? Um, okay. So I've been working on my skirt. Plan is granny squares down the sides, front and back will be shorter than the two sides. Mm -hmm. And I finished all my squares. And I have started stitching them together. I actually almost finished stitching them together. Okay, yeah, this is the one I spent. So this is one side of the skirt. This is just a little over 25 inches. Cause let me tell you what happened. So I made my squares and I told y'all they were a little like wrinkly crinkly. And so I wanted to block them just to get them, you know, nice and flat. And before I block them, they were measuring about four and a quarter inches. So get my little bucket of water and I get my ukulele and jasmine scented. And I dropped the first square in the water and it seemed to bloom. It seemed to embiggen right before my eyes, but I was like, surely that is my imagination. It can't be happening. So I went ahead and chucked the others in there. I didn't block them for that long, like less than an hour and, you know, soak them for that long. But when I took them out, what happened, Chris? They had most certainly embiggened. It was not my imagination. And there was no way they were going to be four and a quarter inches. So the smallest really that I could get them to was about five inches. And I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> like, wool is a lie. <laughs> wool is alive. Not alive. Wool is a lie. <laughs> wool tell you it one thing and then it'd be something else. And I'm like, wool, why you didn't lie like that? So my squares are bigger than I had planned, but that is okay. Because I'd always plan to make the sides first and then um make the front and the back, you know, the side I needed based, the size I needed based on how the sides came out. And it's just a good thing that I started with the sides. Had I already made the front and the back of the skirt, my skirt would end up being too big because my, my squares definitely grew. Um, so this is not an issue. I'm <sighs> very fortunately. Um, yeah, so my square is a little bit bigger and, and that's okay. Um, so I have five uh, stitches together here. I just did a mattress stitch, so from the front, um, you don't see a seam. And I have four squares stitched together. I have one more to add to the other side, and then I can start um, working on the front and the back. I do want to say about that yarn. Good God, it feels good. It does. Oh. It, this is really nice. This oh is my um, gosh. Angora lace. Yes, Angora lace. And sadly discontinued, but I have a little bit of it left in my stash, so I'm 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 good. But yeah, so that's what's going on with with the skirt. Let's talk about blocking for a second. Should we? Uh, yeah, I think we should. Because well, it's a lie. <laughs> and as long as you know that going into it, it's fine. You won't have any problems. Wool is just malleable. So when when we're gonna block something, right? Blocking does not automatically mean stretching. And I think that's where a lot of us, at least when I first learned about blocking, that's what I thought it was. I thought it was this, this stretching process. And just the weight of the water makes the wool kind of expand. And these squares could easily have been six inches if you wanted yeah, them to be. Yeah, I, I didn't stretch them at all. I was very careful to not make them grow any bigger as I was, you know, pinning them out. So in in this case, since you didn't want them any bigger, we were actually scrunching them in. And Crystal does not believe in the scrunch, but the scrunch worked. So scrunch it in and we pinned it. I had just a bad experience. <laughs> <laughs> we pinned them down just to keep them in place, not to open them out. Cause they opened on their own, really. Once you put them in water, even the holes you made, opened up a little bit more 
So just, just keep that in mind. You're not always stretching and pulling. Sometimes you might need to scrunch it. You wanna always block with a ruler or tape measure in hand so that you can make sure everything is to the size that you want it to be and then set it in that size. You can even take a an L-shaped ruler if you want something to really be square and square it up so that your squares are perfectly square. <laughs> well, is that a lot? It just, you know, it just wants to know you better I before it reveals itself completely. the first one in the water. Like, oh. <laughs> like, did that grow? <laughs> At first, you're not sure, right? <laughs> like, clearly, that's my imagination, you know? But it wasn't. But I have steamed wool and watched it actually grow right before my eyes. So just, just be aware of it. So here's the fun part. So the yarn that I'm using for the front and the back panels is super wash. This yarn is not. So typically you would block superwash yarn by actually washing it and drying it, but this stuff can't go in the washer and dryer. So once this is part of the skirt, the skirt can't be laundered. Um, so I'm going to have to either steam or wet block. I'll probably wet block my swatch for the front and back panels because I'll need to block them both the same way. Mm -hmm. And since, you know, I'll be limited in what I can do with the skirt once the two different yarns are together, I'm just going to. Oh, and be aware that superwash yarn stretches more than. I don't want to hear it. Non super. You know, I'll save that for another time. <laughs> Good. Well, it's alive, boys and girls. <laughs> it's alive. It's alive. L I E. <laughs> But yeah, that, those were my adventures in blocking. And so I was like, you know, how would I account for that? And Lisa's like, well, that's why you have to um, watch and block your swatch before you make the thing. And I was like, I don't see that happening. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Me <laughs> and Wool are going to have to learn to get along with yes. each other. Yes. And so far, I'm not feeling very, you know, friendly <laughs> towards wool. <laughs> but I understand more and more sometimes when people say, you know, I did, I made my swatch and I don't understand why this thing still came out too big. If you don't, if you haven't blocked your swatch, you have no idea what the finished size of the thing really is going to be. And wool is like that. It could actually be much different than what you measured. Than what you measured. <laughs> no, you didn't ask it. You didn't ask it properly. Wool is tricksy and false. <laughs> but it's okay. We, we we here now. Yeah. So that that's the status of my whip. Well, see, good Lisa, I only have the one project going going. All I've got on on the planning board is my pit. <laughs> I decided though for the next couple of months I want to my sock mojo is activated again so I really just want to make some socks so I decided that I would set myself a little task of making you know one pair of socks each month for the next couple of months so the next thing that's going to be on my needles I'll probably start these by the weekend sometime is a pair of socks in this beautiful, beautiful yarn. This is a Persimmon Hill from Alba Park, and the colorway is called Wild Horses. This is a 7525 Merino sock yarn, but I just love the, the grays and the reds that are going on in here. And then this is Jojo Sock from Hope Made Yarn. And I loved what was going on. And I actually brought this with me to the to the show to match it together with this. And I love what I came up with. Now, when I saw this one on the table, this was my first choice. But I went all around that table, playing around, playing around, playing around, and came back to my first choice. I did not want to be that person, but I was. 
<laughs> so this is called Red Red Wine, which I love the name. And this is also a 75-25 uh, Merino and nylon sock yarn. So it's gonna be a very, very luxurious sock. So I've been playing around with what I wanted it to look like. And what I came up with was making it sort of um, Scorpio themed because my birthday is in November. Are you gonna have a little scorpion at the clock on yourself? I thought of that first, I did. And I, I actually have my mood board here and I'm gonna put a picture of it in so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And there is a scorpion for a clock, but then I decided instead of doing a clock, I would do a band at the top of the sock. And then I was like, ah, oh, the scorpion is so literal. So I looked up what the birthday flower is for Scorpios, and it turns out to be geraniums. Uh, so is it for your sign or for your month? The the you, have, you have two. Okay. You have a flower for your month. My my flower for the month is um, chrysanthemum. Okay. And the flower for my sign is geranium. Okay. And just because it was the right color, I decided to go with geraniums. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> they they match my my red red wine yarn because I really wanted to use that because those are Scorpio ish colors anyway, so I thought that would be so much fun and I had some ideas of how I would do the sock and as you can see on my mood board, I was playing around with the ideas, but that's that's it. That's gonna be my my November sock. What's up with you, friends? She's like not innocent, but I she am. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. I I have a bit of pit brain happening, and I have I'm I'm nursing what I'm calling a mini cue because I have a number of things that I am thinking about me. I just keep getting like these little ideas. And I'm like, oh yeah, maybe that. Oh, well, what about that? And so I'm just trying to contain the chaos. Um, I haven't started working on anything yet because I don't do that. <laughs> but I'm just keeping like this running queue. And so she thought I should talk about my, my mini queue because it's, I guess, what she would call part of my process. It is. I don't have a process. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let us know. Does Chris have a process, you guys? No think? process. I am processless. <laughs> but okay, so let me let me get the actual list because okay. So here's the thing. Oh, see, I forgot to bring things. We we might put in pictures. Yeah. Um, I have a crochet confession. I did not know how to do a flat circle. So like if you want to do like a round yoke something, couldn't do it. I would try and I would try and I would try. And like I had certain patterns and you know, if I followed that pattern, obviously I could, you know, recreate it. But then to try to do something like that on my own, I was stymied. But the pattern book mommy just got with the, the textured crochet sweaters, mm -hmm. um, the first, a lot of those have round yokes, but the first one in the book was kind of like the simplest. It was just like mostly double crochet stitches and I think a few post stitches. And so I was like, well, let me look at this and see how she did this like perfectly round yoke. And I saw how she did her increases and I started playing around with my yarn and I was like, oh, I think I can do it now. At least with double crochet, I can do it with double crochet or if I combine like extended single crochet and single crochet alternating rows because I can do it with stitches at a certain height I have to uh -huh. see if the same um increase rate applies if you're just doing single crochet but I can make a flat circle now and so I had this idea to crochet a circle skirt because in sewing a circle skirt is supposed to be like a really really simple um but me and sewing well, on the outs. So <laughs> I have to crochet my circle skirt. And I knew that meant it would be a lot of fabric because that's one thing about circle skirts. 
you, if you do like a full circle and not like a quarter or something, um, you're going to have a lot of fabric. So I knew I needed a really, really lightweight yarn. So what I decided to go with is if, one of these. Now, they're actually technically like the, the same yarn. They're both 70% super washed wool, 30% um, silk. This is called Whisper Lace. That's a discontinued yarn, but she purity. I don't know how people do it. We will insert it. Uh -huh. ah, there we go. go. Um, this is pretty much the same yarn, but this is from Willow Yarns. And she's got all, she's so autumnal though. Oh my gosh, mm. look at her. So uh, I'll probably use one of these because either of these will give me a very like light diaphanous fabric, but it won't be completely sheer the way like a, um, a mohair would. Yeah. So. One of these will be my circle skirt. Probably this one just because I have more of it. I don't know exactly how much I'm gonna need to do it, but we'll see. So that's pip number one. Then pip number two is, funny enough, a mohair skirt. However, so I like sheer over skirts, like, you know, tulle or something, just some sort of sheer fabric worn over another skirt or leggings or what have you. I just think that look is really, really cute. And so I wanted to do something like that. And I made a shawl, maybe last year? Yeah. And part of the shawl was mohair and I did V-stitch. And so it just gave you this beautiful, almost like lace. It was, it, it flows beautifully. And so I wanted to do something like that, but instead of just like doing a circle, I'm gonna do something if you make a rectangle, right? So imagine you're doing like a, a raglan increase top. So you're gonna have that open rectangle in the center that would be huh. your neck hole. And then, you know, you're just gonna build out on the four sides and increase at those corners. So if you do that with a skirt, so that opening is, your, is at your waist, when the skirt hangs, your front, back and sides will be a little shorter, but those corners will hang down longer, kind of like a handkerchief hem. Handkerchief skirt. Yeah. And it's gonna look really, really cute, but it'll still be very, very simple. And so I think that's what I'm going to do. And it's going, since we're going into the holiday season, I thought this beautiful red mohair was just the thing. Amazing. That is pip number two. Pip number three, I have a terrible sketch, but it, she'll make me show it. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> But basically I was watching TV and I saw a woman in a commercial who just, just had in this basic, very like boxy jacket. And the body of the jacket was multicolored, but then, you know, the center, uh, what do you call that? Um, down the center oh, front. Like the placket? Yes, was um, solid. And I just thought that was really cute. It had a little a short collar. And like I said, the thing was completely boxy. I think hers had three quarter sleeves. And I was just like, that's so cute. That's just like a super cute basic jacket. And I'm like, I, I, I want that. So that snuck on the hue when I wasn't even looking. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how that even happened. I'm just innocently watching TV and something jumped out my TV and got on my cue. Mm. So basic boxy jacket. I don't know what yarn I'm gonna use for that yet, but I know I wanna use a multi and a contrast solid. Oh, that'll be nice. Um, that is pit number three. Pit number four has to do with the fact that I have come to terms with the realization that I like cardigans better than pullovers. And I keep making pullovers and I like them and I wear them, but I just, I think cardigans are more comfortable and more versatile. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I need to get on my cardigan game. So I want to make a long cardigan, like almost knee length. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm not going to seam the sides. Instead, I'll have like maybe two, one or two large decorative buttons on the upper portion of the jacket. And then those side seams will also be open. So it'll just be the front it will be, you know, two pieces. The back will be one, but all of the seams will basically be um, split. 
Nice. The yarn though, I'm going to use is, I have three different yarns that all have like a lot of orange and they're all from our friend Laura Stout at Three Bunny Designs. And so this is Cardinals on a Hot Summer Day. Beautiful. This is Carrot Attack with <laughs> three exclamation points. <laughs> and then this is can you see me now? Because yes. <laughs> <laughs> but look at them together. Oh my God. So I'm going to do something that's just basically stripes. I might do those in like spike stitches so that the colors oh, will overlap a little bit. That'd be nice, yeah. And I'm just going to make a cardigan with all the oranges. And I refer to it as the... Um, Autumn Tacular's Fall Explosion. Yes. And for some reason, Lisa just really like that. But I love that. Yeah, so that, that will be my, because it's it's going to be very fall, autumn, you know, oranges, greens, browns. Oh, absolutely. I know. So that is, uh, I'm, right now I'm calling her the triple orange jacket. And <laughs> but Autumn Tacular Fall Explosion is so much better. And um, that is pip number four. <laughs> um, five. I forgot one of my props, but we will picture. Mm -hmm. um, on the cover of, is it Vogue or Harper's Bazaar? Some magazine. I have this actress I've never heard of. Um, wearing this. Honestly, I thought it was kind of weird. It's a weird thing she's wearing because I guess it's a dress, but it looks kind of like a nightgown, mm -hmm. like a really old fashioned nightgown. So it comes it's neck to like almost ankles. And then it's got a little bit of ruffle, like a really short ruffle around the neck. It's long sleeve. And I believe there's also a little ruffling around the, the cuffs. But it's it's sheer because it's like a lace material. So I don't get it. Like it, it covers everything, but then covers nothing at the same time. And I was like, this is weird. What? <laughs> Speaking to me, right? I could do something similar that's a little less weird. And so I had the idea, because I love shirt dresses, to do something that's just like a, a very basic uh, classic shirt dress with a collar. Buttons down the front, even though I'm talking a good game, but I hate button bands and buttonholes. Well, but I don't, you know, I'm trying not to let my weird little peccadillos keep me from making the things I want to make. But <laughs> this isn't going to be a lot of fun. But doing it in either a lacy stitch or even like a, a version of a mesh, or I've been wanting to do something fillet crochet. Oh, oh. So. Yeah. A fillet crochet shirt dress. So it would be like knee length. And I think that would be cute as all heck. I don't have a yarn and for it yet. You won't look at you escape from the nutcracker. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I was like, it, it, I see something there, not that dress. That just apparently is a Chanel dress. So I'm sure it costs a ridiculous amount of money, but it's it, it looks like your pajamas. It looks like your granny's pajamas, only see-through, which is super awkward. Picture what Clara and the Nutcracker would wear. Only make it fashion. <laughs> so that gave me an idea for what is now ridiculously long list, pip number five. We're in the home stretch, folks. I'm so excited. If you're still here, this. wow. Uh, <laughs> so the last thing on the list is pip number six. Now, I still struggle with shawls just because there are so many choices to make with shawls and the choice I always get stuck on is the shape. There's so many different shapes of the shawl. Like I did a triangular one and I did a rectangular one and I was just, I don't know. I always like get an idea and then I stop because I'm like, well, I don't know what shape to make it. But I got this idea to do a basic rectangular shawl, but make it cute. Mm. Because what it's going to look like is kind of like a film strip, 
and I would do intarsia. So basically imagine like black, there'll be a picture of, again, of a terrible sketch, but um, it's it, basically the, the borders will be black, but with small holes in some sort of, not holes, but squares of a contrast color. Yep. And then large center squares also in that contrast color. Lisa said some of y'all wouldn't be old enough to know what a film should look like. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. But you can look that up if you like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought that would just be a cute, fun thing that would just be all squares. But yeah, but strung drama. together, it'll make a really cute yeah. shawl. So that's what I'm going to do. But I don't have the arm for that because right now I'm thinking either black and white or gray and white. But, and I don't have anything at the moment, but I'm, I will be looking for some yarn for my film strip um, shawl. And so this is this is where my projects start. I, I see a thing and then I adapt a version of it or sometimes I just make something up. But I, I was trying to, I guess, kind of show how I go from the inspiration mm -hmm. to that first version of what I think I'm going to make. And so I was trying to explain like all of my inspo for each of the things on the mini queue and then how they turn into what I think they might end up being, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Russell, don't, don't like, like nail everything down so precisely. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's, that's the mini queue. And we'll see how much of the mini queue we get through. I think I'll be able to do at least three of those before the end of the year, but we'll see. You go, girl. We'll see. That's that's ambitious. Well, it's October now. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? We'll take them when we get them. I'm <laughs> I'm excited to see them. Which I don't understand because I mean, this is me just talking. I, I love seeing. You know what? I've always been fascinated by the creative process. You know, so when everybody was like talking about Leonardo's notebooks, I was reading Leonardo's notebooks. You know, I've read Twilight Tarp's A Creative Habit. And just the mechanism of creativity is interesting to me. I don't think me. I have one of those. You, you, you just showed it to us. <laughs> you just know. showed us your mechanism. Me, this is just like you know still fantasy daydream realm until i have like a swatch it ain't real so but look how much so i'm like uncomfortable like sharing all of it because i'm just like but look i may be lying <laughs> i'm an unreliable this. narrator there you go <laughs> you've already put in so much work you know making the idea because but you know that's what it is first you have to make the idea concrete to you before you can actually build bring it to fruition in the world. And I feel like I'm still doing that, but she's making me share. Oh Lord. Like, it I'm, made me sound like some kind of Simon Legree. My my kind of creek's still setting. That's okay. <laughs> that's a, and we expect that there will be changes and that's okay too. Because we're not actually working in concrete. <laughs> and people change things in concrete all the time. <laughs> I have one more thing. Oh, my book's still so I am finally going to cast on my niece's, our niece's duck sweater. And I'm like really happy about that. Well, it's a pip. You said you had one pip. And now y'all see the second secret pip coming out. <laughs> I just want to, if we're keeping count, if we're going to have a pip counter. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at six. I'll see if I can find but a counter. She at there. two when she has <laughs> said one. That's all. That's well, all I'm saying. I, I, okay. Well, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm still concretizing, as they say. So what you want is a pullover sweater with a duck right here in the middle. So when she was visiting with us, we looked at ducks and we picked out what kind of duck it was going to be. And I, when we went on the wool walk, I started looking for yarn for the sweater. So, oh, and I have wound the yarn for the sweater because Lord, it was a lot of yarn. <laughs> and you know what? I always have this issue. If it's too many skeins to wind, I don't wind them all. But then in the middle of a project, I got to stop and wind yarn. Yep. 
They but, have to get wound before, during, or during, but they have to get wound. Exactly. So I ended up, everything is not in skeins, so I just wound all the skeins. I'm gonna be using this yarn, this is Barocco Vintage, for the background color. It's gonna be the base color that the sweater is. And I am all for acrylic blends or superwash wool for kids' clothes because I don't wanna give the parents a burden. So this yarn, all of it can be washed and dried in the dryer. This is a gray that's going to make up most of the body of the duck. It's a mallard, so it's actually quite a colorful duck. Part of it is brown, and for the brown, I'm using uh, Plymouth Encore, another hard-wearing 50, almost 50-50-ish uh, acrylic and wool yarn. So it's gonna be breathable, it's gonna be comfortable and warm, but once again, it can all go in the wash and dry. And for some of the ducky details. The ducky details? The ducky details. I got these. But the duck is in the details. The duck is in the details. <laughs> and I think that's the name of this episode. <laughs> oh, don't hide. You said that. <laughs> uh, Knitting Fever puts out what they call teeny weeny wool. And I knew I was just going to need little bits mm -hmm. of yarn to duplicate stitch on some details. Because I'm going to do intarsia for the main body of the duck. But for the little details, I will be doing duplicate stitch in these greens and blues and whites and yellows. And these balls were about 50 cents each. And they're just, I think they're like 13 yards of wool. So sometimes look around your yarn shop. Some of them carry these. You can actually use the um, vendor finder on KFI's website, Knitting People's website to tell you where these are. So because sometimes if you, you just need a little bit. A little bit, and it, it really doesn't pay if you just need a color. To buy a whole skein, even fifty grams is a lot because I think these are ten gram skeins. And fifty cents later, here I am. So the only decision I need to make now is: Am I going to do a top-down raglan, or am I going to do a piece sweater? So I, I don't know yet. I'm just gonna be reading through both of these books. I have Ann Bud's Handy Book of Patterns. And it's a whole bunch of basic patterns for sweaters, hats, I don't do whatever. Piece if you're doing intarsia, just because you'll yeah. only be holding the front panel as opposed you know to what? trying to hold a whole sweater. I think you just made the decision for me. <laughs> yep, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Because you're already going to be attached to multiple skeins. And I'm going to have those. Yeah. Okay. That's done. <laughs> Peace sweater it is. Peace sweater it is. This is um, Ann Bud's book of top-down sweaters. So it's all different kinds. Raglan, seamless yoke, set in sleeve, saddle shoulder. I just want to point out the back says, discover top-down knitting from the ground up. Someone thought they were clever. I know they did. <laughs> you know what? Who can resist a good knitting pun? <laughs> So I will be doing a piece, piece sweater. <laughs> Glad I can help. Thank you, thank you. you did, I was like, ooh, yeah, she made a point there. <laughs> uh, from the, the Knitter's Book of Patterns. And this book is really, really cool because basically what you do is you pick your item and it has a whole bunch of gauges. So you make your swatch, you see what your gauge is, you pick your size based on your gauge and off you go. Simple instructions for all kinds of basic items. Which you can make as fancy or as plain as you like. Or as ducky as you like. Or as ducky as you like. There you go. Oh, speaking of there you go. Ah, I am <laughs> I am. They're the worst for me. <laughs> they are absolutely the worst for me. I just, you know what? I've just, 
accepted that I'm awkward in transitions, <laughs> and I just be my awkward self. And what would you like to tell over. the people, Lisa? I will be teaching at Vogue Knitting uh, October 27th through 29th. That's the, virtually. Yes, uh, that's the virtual Vogue dates for October. Um, I'm going to be teaching. Hang on a minute. Working pattern. No, but that's okay. I had it. I have it ready. Ish. Kind of, sort of. I'm closer than I usually am. <laughs> Is that it? No. Oh, here we go. Yes. I'm going to be teaching <laughs> Sweater Savvy. You need the first sweater that fits on Sunday, October 29th. And I will be teaching Bind Off Loosely Like a Pro. Also on Sunday, October 29th from 2 to 4. I, I think... My, one of my favorites is Bind Off Loosely Like a Pro because, especially when I was a beginning knitter, sometimes a pattern ends by saying, <laughs> bind off loosely, go with God. <laughs> Only they don't say go with God. And if you don't know how to bind off loosely, and your bind off is always tight, and you don't know that there's more than one bind off, <laughs> this is a class for you. <laughs> Because I would have, I would have knocked all the things that you didn't know exactly. back in the day. Exactly. I wish I had had this class. <laughs> but that's what is up with me in October. Okay. You got anything else, Chris? No, I'm good. All right, all right. So thank you for joining us once again for the shenanigans. Oh. <laughs> there are always shenanigans. One time, we're just gonna do like a straight episode, and people are gonna be like, "Are they okay?" I know, right? <laughs> it felt off. It felt awkward. <laughs> anyway, see you guys. guys next time. Stay stitching. <laughs>